Okay, I'm gonna be trying something totally different, which is learning how to drive using VR and AI with the help of MetaQuest 3 and the help of ChatGPT. My goal is to get my driver's license in under six months. And basically, I'm gonna be documenting the whole journey for you guys. The whole idea is to combine immersiveness using the VR headset with AI assistance using ChatGPT. Quality over quantity. Let's do a quick walkthrough of the setup real quick. Okay, so first up, we've got the MetaQuest 3 VR headset. This is what I'm holding right now. And this is where all the immersive driving, practice, and studying will happen. Simulating parking and driving using VR games and all that stuff. All that good stuff. Next, we're gonna be using Chad GBT, he's gonna be our virtual assistant. Yo, Chad, what's good? Hey, Mateo, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How about you? I'm chilling, just about to finish up making this video right now. Nice. What's the video about this time? Many OBs wax. That was kind of cool. <laughs> I love it. A little suspense never hurts. Good luck with finishing <laughs> up the video. All together, I'm gonna be combining these two tools in one or two hour long learning sessions. So, diving in, this is what I see. And this is how my hands look. This is how everything looks to me right now. First thing I'm gonna do is open up my browser. Actually, the first thing I'm gonna do is this. Okay, so here's how it works. ChatGBT will be in one tab and he will be guiding me through the manual open in another tab. Then I'm gonna be using some VR games to help me get through the basics. ChatGBT is great at explaining things from the manual and also it just feels more natural cause you can just go at your own pace and ask any questions you want. Immersion to this level helps you retain as much as you can. So in other words, just do not drink and drive. Exactly. Just don't drink and drive. It's the safest choice for everyone. Just tell me what arrows are. Arrows on pavement markings indicate the direction you must go in that lane. For example, a straight arrow means you must continue straight, while a curved arrow indicates a turn. If the flagger is waving their arm with the flag down, it also signals that you can proceed but carefully. Always follow their guidance to navigate safely through the area. I can even tell it to quiz me using information from the manual. It's almost like I have my own instructor. So the right answer was uh, diamond shaped and yellow? Exactly. Warning signs are yellow and diamond shaped. For the next question, what color and shape is a destination sign? The color and the shape of destination signs are usually green, and then they're also usually sometimes black and white. The shape of it is rectangular, and then I think that's it. Correct. Destination signs are typically green and rectangular. Well done. On to the next question, what must you do at a stop sign? At my own pace, I'm going to be trying to get through all the chapters in the manual. At the same time while getting through all the chapters in the manual, I'm going to be taking everything I learned and using it in VR games. Okay, so here I am opening up a game. It's a VR game. It's called Car Parking. And here I am now just getting my boundaries set up. So it's going to do that little scanny thing for me. And this is just me editing my boundary right now. I mean, I know I'm going to be stationary in the game because, you know, I'm going to be in a seat, a driver's seat, but it's good to know that my boundary is accurate. Okay, so diving right into it, I told Chad to start with the basics for me. All right, let's start with basic straight in parking, like pulling into a regular spot in a lot. Once you're parked there, we can go over the steps for backing out or adjusting. Sound good? I think I see a spot ahead of me right now. I'm going to park in from the front, right? Exactly. That's a front in or straight in park. As you approach, slow down and one, signal to let others know you're taking the spot. Two, align your car about two to three feet away from the parked cars on either side. Three, once your front bumper is just past the first line of the spot, start turning your wheel toward the center of the space. Right now, what I really want to learn is like holding the wheel. What's the right way to hold the wheel? What's the right way to turn? What type of hand placement should I be having right now? Great question. Proper hand placement is key for control. Here's what you want to do. One hand placement. Always hold the wheel at the nine and three position. Imagine the wheel as a clock. Your left hand goes at nine and your right hand at three. This gives you the most control and works well with modern airbags. Two, turning. Use the hand over hand method for tighter turns. Start turning the wheel with one hand while the other crosses over to continue the motion. For gentle turns, you can just push and pull the wheel with both hands. Three, grip. Hold the wheel firmly, but not too tight. Just enough to maintain control without feeling stiff. Practice keeping your hands steady and see how it feels as you make slow turns. All right, let's go for it. Keep your hands at nine and three. And as you start driving, practice making smooth, deliberate turns using that hand over hand technique. Okay. Start with some gentle left and right turns to get comfortable. Let me know how it feels as you go. 
Alright, hold on. Let me just back out this out of this parking spot. Take your time backing out. Remember to check your mirrors and look over your shoulder to make sure the area is clear. Slowly reverse while keeping your wheels straight until you're clear of the spot. Let me know once you're out and ready to practice those turns. Alright, I'm practicing them right now. I'm just going around the parking lot and practicing the turns. Nice. As you're practicing, focus on keeping your hands steady at 9 and 3. When you make a turn, smoothly cross one hand over the other for tight turns. Then let the wheel naturally slide back to center as you straighten out. How's it feeling so far? Well, since this is VR, I'm kind of just like... It's different than the real thing, but I think what you're telling me is helpful, nonetheless. Oh, you're in VR? That's awesome. Practicing in VR is still super helpful. It gets you familiar with the movements and builds muscle memory. Just focus on making those turns smooth and keeping control of the wheel. When you hit the real car, it'll feel more natural. Anything else you want to work on in this session? I don't know. Is there anything that I'm, you know, that I should be working on? I feel like I'm asking the right questions, but in the end, you're the one who's a professional here. So is there anything else you could teach me? You're asking all the right questions so far. But since you're focusing on parking and steering, here are a couple of areas you could add to your practice. One, backing into a spot. It's good to practice reversing into a parking space. It can feel tricky at first, but it's super useful in tight lots. Two, three-point turns. These help when you need to turn around in a small space and can be a bit tricky to master. Three, judging distances. Practice stopping with your front bumper aligned to a line or an object to build your sense of spatial awareness. Four, blind spot checks. Always make it a habit to check over your shoulder when changing directions, even in VR. Let me know which one sounds interesting, and we can dive into it. Ah, no worries, it's VR, so no harm done. <laughs> Crashing is part of learning. Yeah. Think about what might have caused it. Was it speed, turning too sharply, or not judging space right? We can troubleshoot and get you back on track. It definitely was speed. Can you just teach me how to do a three-point turn? No problem, I got you. Here's a simpler breakdown for the three-point turn. One, pull over and stop on the right side of the road or lot. Signal left to show you're about to turn. Two, turn the wheel all the way to the left and drive forward slowly until your car is almost touching the edge or curb on the opposite side. Three, stop, then shift into reverse. Turn the wheel all the way to the right and back up slowly until you're angled back toward your starting side. Four, stop again, shift into drive, turn the wheel left again, and drive forward into your new direction. Let me know if that clears it up or if you need me to explain a part more. I see now. Honestly, that's not really hard. It's just that in VR, you know, the diameter in which I can turn is only so small. I bet you it's, you know, bigger in a real life car, but hey, that was really helpful. Exactly. Real life cars usually have a better turning radius, so it feels a bit easier compared to VR. But if you've got the basic idea down here, you'll be in great shape when you try it in real life. Glad it helped. Anything else you're curious about or want to practice? Hey chat, so there's this elephant in front of me. What do I do? Wait, an elephant? Like in the VR simulation? If so, just steer around it slowly and carefully. If this is some sort of metaphor, I might need some context. What's going on? No, like in VR, like why don't I just crash into it? Well, you could crash into it since it's VR, but think of it as a fun practice moment for avoiding obstacles. Pretend it's a real life situation. Steer around it smoothly, speed in check, and use this chance to work on precision. Whoa, it's a giraffe now. Alright, now you're just driving through a safari. <laughs> Same idea. Pretend it's a real obstacle. Yeah. Slow down, steer smoothly around it, and maybe admire the giraffe for a second. Honestly, you've been a great help, but I think this lesson is done. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome, Mateo. You crushed it today. Keep practicing, and you'll nail driving in no time. Have fun with your video, and let me know if you need more tips later. Safe driving. See ya. Now, it's not all smooth sailing. Let's just say it's way easier to mess up in a VR car than in a real car. But that's the beauty of it. I can make mistakes without any real consequences. And honestly, that's helping me learn way faster. 
for somebody who was a complete novice when it comes to driving, I think I learned a lot, especially using ChatGPT and using the VR headset, and also just studying on my own as well. So what have I learned so far? First, VR gives you a level of immersion that makes learning feel so much more natural. You're not just memorizing rules, you're applying them in real time. Second, ChatGPT is an amazing tool for filling in the gaps, whether it's explaining or confusing, explaining a confusing concept or giving me tips for handling certain situations. Overall, I'd say this experiment is off to an exciting start and I can't wait to see how much progress I'll make over the next few weeks. Thank you all for watching. Follow me on my journey to getting a driver's license in under six months using VR and AI. I'll be showing you guys progress weekly until I have a driver's license and let me know in the comments. And until next time, whenever I decide to post again, goodbye.